In Central Florida, one Vincentian conference has made re-entry and revitalization the focus of its work. St. Vincent de Paul Orlando Executive Director Trace Trilco shows us how a multifaceted approach is succeeding in helping people become and remain productive members of society. Carry and go, you can get all your furniture, half price. Milton Plaza's larger than life personality is always on display at the St. Vincent de Paul Orlando Thrift Store's Apopka, Florida location. Positive and upbeat now, Milton's life was nearly derailed after spending more than a decade of his life behind bars for drug-related crimes. People gave me chances. They trusted in me. They see something in me that other people didn't see, and especially the, the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Through the outreach of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's Jail and Prison Ministry Conference of St. Peter Claver, Milton and others are earning a second chance. The ministry relies upon a network of trained volunteer mentors to provide much needed support. It made me feel loved because my father didn't show me that growing up. I had to learn that the hard way. You know, I thought that love was the men in the street selling drugs and this and that. So my father wasn't there. So, you know, when, when these guys came in, uh, they, 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 they showed us unconditional love and that really that, that, that hit, you know, home. Substance abuse led Jennifer Keene, a young mother of two, to commit crimes to pay for her habit, and this almost ruined her life. That plunged me into the depths of addiction. Pretty much, it was gradual, but it escalated and escalated to the point that I was using my prescription medication as a legal drug addict. Jennifer's relationship with Catholic volunteers and Vincentian members of the society like Barb Bowden and Pat Baird provided an important lifeline. That's really our mission is to bring them, you know, Jesus' word of hope and love and forgiveness um, so they feel that and uh, it's very touching, you know, very very, um, you know, it's a very humbling experience because I think they, they're so appreciative and yet we're the ones that definitely see, you know, we see Jesus in them. They're there because they want to be there. They're there because they want to hear um, uh, the, the word. They want to talk about the word. They want to, they want to get feedback. They want to express their feelings. They're um, many times looking for how they how they could get forgiveness. He's going to keep on doing what he's got to do until that right spot comes along in his life. You just got to do the leg work. You just got to put in 100% and you'll get where you need to go. Everything's going good so far. I'm trying to stay on the right track, avoid any negativity at all costs. Program participants and mentors come together for regular stay out of jail nights to share their stories and find support from a caring community. It's moments like these that inspire conference president Bruce Stumbrus. Visiting these men in prison is where I see the face of Christ more than anywhere else in the world. One of the keys to success for the St. Peter Claver prison ministry happens here at Father Ennis Village. What may look like a simple trailer park for these returning citizens is a new lease on life. I didn't have nowhere. I didn't have nowhere to go. I mean, as soon as I, as soon as I was getting released from prison, I had no, I had nothing, no money, no job, no house, no nothing. Support of housing was a key to John Frames rebuilding his life. With a roof over his head, Frames landed a full-time job. He says he couldn't have done it without the helping hand provided by compassionate Vincentian volunteers. Oh, I'm I'm very grateful. This is this is my family. I mean, this 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 is my family. You know, St. Vincent de Paul was my beginning. Dozens of program enrollees have rebuilt their self-esteem and made important connections to jobs. We have a number of guys that started here and now are managing organizations that are, you know, have 18, 20 dollar hour jobs. Volunteers like Ruben A. Sanabria feel a calling to help people who have served their time and who want to make a difference in their lives. The problem they're having is once they get out of prison, society shuts the doors on them. And we're the only ones that have been opening these doors for them so that can come back and they'll be useful in society. Ben Gross also plays an important role in this ministry, making sure men like him who are released from prison have a backpack built with love. I come down here every Monday and I fill out bags uh, and I give them extra clothes. I give them uh, a couple pairs of pants, a pair of shorts if we have them, uh, a couple pairs of socks, two pairs of boxers, uh, toiletries, a pair of, a pair of shoes and jackets if it's winter weather. 
And that way, these guys have the things that they need because it's already hard enough for guys getting out of prison to find a job, find a place to live, than if he's wearing the same pair of clothes for two or three days. Every year, the St. Peter Claver Prison Ministry provides hundreds of re-entry kits to several incarceration facilities in Central Florida. Volunteers often hear from grateful recipients. Ben says this simple token provides dignity and respect. When I first got out of prison, I lived under, uh, I was, it wasn't a bad, it was a bad situation. And when I got a, a nice pair of shoes and I got a nice suit, and a nice, you know, I had a tie, it's such a good feeling, you know, to have those things. To know that you're not just a, an inmate where you think people are looking at you. Now it's like, I'm, look at me, I'm dressed nicely, I'm going to church, I'm, I'm showing that I have nice clothes. It's, it's, it gives you a feeling of, I'm a, uh, like, I'm, I'm really a member of society. Inspired by gospel values, Vincentian volunteers are growing in their spirituality through this person-to-person -person service. This, this is priceless. The satisfaction that I get is that when I'm with them and I help them, I've confirmed what the Lord told me to do. This is your mission. You need to help these people get out of prison and be in society and be better persons in society. I feel the Holy Spirit in the room with us. It's, it's, it's really, uh, it, 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 it's very infectious. I always leave there after my few hours of being there feeling like I've gotten way much more from my time than I've given. Make no mistake, the people being served are grateful. There is a tomorrow, there is a future, there is a hope, and these trials and tribulations can become your testimony for a life full of expectations and enormous opportunities if, if you are determined enough. Like Jennifer, Milton Plaza is determined to make the most of his second chance. It's been beautiful. Um, I've, been, I've, been, I've been here four years and, uh, and St. Vincent and Paul gave me opportunity in life and now I'm taking the advantage of it to the full, to the fullest. Um, uh, now, uh, you know, I met this great woman in my life and uh, I'm getting married in September. You know, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing because, you know, I thought that nobody, somebody like me can ever do that, make that, 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 that transition, that jump, you know, and it was, it, it's, it's beautiful because God has blessed me. When you work in prison ministry, uh, you really see God's love and mercy uh, in action. Seeing the face of Christ in the disadvantaged, the forgotten, and people in poverty is the very essence of Vincentian spirituality. For Our Faith in Action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I'm Trace Trolka.